James Webb Space Telescope has just observed a planet that is hotter than the sun, bigger than Jupiter, and in the habitable zone of its star, and it is called WASP-80b. WASP-80b is a hot Jupiter-like exoplanet that orbits a cool, low-mass star about 200 light-years away from Earth. It was discovered in 2013 by the Wide Angle Search for Planets, WASP project, and it is one of the few hot Jupiters that have been detected around cool stars. These stars are very common in the galaxy, but they are also very faint and hard to observe. That's why the James Webb Space Telescope decided to take a closer look at this system and reveal its secrets and mysteries. In this video, I will explain how Webb observed the WASP-80b system, what it found out about the planet's atmosphere and temperature, and what implications this discovery has for our understanding of exoplanet diversity and habitability. I will also show you some amazing images and data from Webb that illustrate the beauty and complexity of this fascinating system. I hope you will enjoy this video and learn something new and exciting about the universe we live in. One of the main goals of Webb is to explore the diversity and habitability of exoplanets, which are planets that orbit stars other than our Sun. Webb has four scientific instruments that can be used for this purpose, but the one that was used to observe the WASP-80b system is the Near Infrared Spectrograph, or NIRSPEC, which is a multi-object spectrograph that can observe up to 100 objects simultaneously and measure their spectra, or the distribution of light by wavelength. It can also operate in a special mode called a prism, which provides a low-resolution spectrum of a single object over a wide wavelength range, from 0.6 to 5 microns. This mode is ideal for studying exoplanet atmospheres because it can capture the absorption features of various molecules, such as water, carbon dioxide, methane, and ammonia, that may be present in the air of these worlds. To study exoplanet atmospheres, Webb uses two complementary methods, transit spectroscopy and secondary eclipse. Transit spectroscopy is when Webb observes the starlight that passes through the planet's atmosphere during transit, which is when the planet crosses in front of the star as seen from Earth. By comparing the spectrum of the starlight before, during, and after the transit, Webb can determine how much of the starlight is absorbed by the planet's atmosphere and at which wavelengths. This reveals the chemical composition and structure of the atmosphere, as different molecules absorb light at different wavelengths. The secondary eclipse method is when Webb observes the thermal emission of the planet when it passes behind the star, which is called occultation. By comparing the spectrum of the system before, during, and after the occultation, Webb can measure how much of the starlight is reflected by the planet and how much of the planet's own heat is radiated. This reveals the temperature and albedo, or reflectivity, of the planet, as well as the presence of clouds or hazes that may affect the thermal balance of the planet. By combining transit spectroscopy and secondary eclipses, Webb can obtain a comprehensive picture of the physical and chemical properties of exoplanet atmospheres and how they vary with time and location on the planet. The WASP-80b system was observed by Webb recently using the NERSPEC prism mode. The observation lasted for about 10 hours and covered one full orbital period of the planet, which is about 3.07 days. It included two transits and two occultations of the planet, which allowed Webb to measure both the transit and the secondary eclipse spectra of the planet. The data were processed and analyzed by the research team who released some preliminary results and images on their website. The first result is the detection of water vapor and methane in the atmosphere of WASP-80b, as well as a possible hint of carbon dioxide. This is shown by the absorption features in the transit spectrum of the planet, which are the dips in the light curve in this image. The image shows the relative change in the brightness of the star as the planet passes in front of it at different wavelengths of infrared light. The dips indicate how much of the starlight is absorbed by the planet's atmosphere and at which wavelengths. The wavelengths correspond to the absorption features of different molecules, such as water, methane, and carbon dioxide, that may be present in the air of the planet. As you can see, the image shows clear evidence of water and methane, 
and a tentative indication of carbon dioxide. This is the first time that these molecules have been detected in the atmosphere of WASP-80b, and it confirms that the planet has a rich and complex chemistry. The second result is the measurement of the temperature and albedo of WASP-80b, which are derived from the secondary eclipse spectrum of the planet. This is shown by the emission features and the light curve in this image. The image shows the relative change in the brightness of the star as the planet passes behind it at different wavelengths of infrared light. The peaks indicate how much of the planet's own heat is radiated and at what wavelengths. The wavelengths correspond to the emission features of the planet, which depend on its temperature and albedo. The team estimated that the planet has an albedo of about 0.06, which means that it reflects only 6% of the starlight that hits it, and a temperature of about 800 K, which is about 527 degrees Celsius. This is a relatively low temperature for a hot Jupiter, which is consistent with the planet's location in the habitable zone of its cool host star. The discovery of water, carbon monoxide, and methane in the atmosphere of WASP-80b is especially interesting because it suggests that the planet has a different origin and evolution than most hot Jupiters. Most hot Jupiters are thought to have formed farther away from their stars and then migrated inward due to gravitational interactions with other planets or the protoplanetary disk. This migration would have stripped away most of their original atmospheres leaving behind mostly hydrogen and helium, and perhaps some traces of carbon dioxide or water. However, WASP-80b seems to have retained a significant amount of its primordial atmosphere, which may indicate that it formed closer to its star, that it migrated more slowly or recently, or that it was shielded from the intense radiation and stellar winds by some mechanism. The presence of methane is also intriguing, because it is usually destroyed by ultraviolet light on hot Jupiters unless there is a source of replenishment, such as volcanism, photochemistry, or biological activity. The origin and fate of methane and WASP-80b are still unclear and require further investigation. This discovery also has implications for the habitability of exoplanets, especially those around cool, low-mass stars. WASP-80b is in the habitable zone of its star, which means that it receives the right amount of energy to potentially support liquid water on its surface if it had a solid surface. However, WASP-80b is not a good candidate for life because it is a gas giant with no solid surface and because it is tidally locked to its star, which means that it always shows the same face to the star, creating extreme temperature contrasts and winds on the planet. Moreover, the planet's atmosphere is very hot and dense, and it probably lacks oxygen and ozone, which are essential for life as we know it. Therefore, WASP-80b is more likely to be a hellish world than a habitable one. However, the planet may have moons that orbit around it, and some of these moons may have more favorable conditions for life, such as a rocky surface, a liquid water ocean, and a protective magnetic field. Webb may be able to detect and characterize these moons in the future and search for signs of life on them. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something new and exciting about this amazing system and about the incredible capabilities of Webb for studying exoplanet atmospheres. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel for more videos on astronomy and space exploration. Thank you again for your attention and see you next time.